What's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get great video in harsh lighting. We're not talking about using diffusion. We're not talking about putting them in the shade as everyone talks about. We're talking about straight harsh lighting, nasty sun hitting, peak hour, and it's just disgusting, but the image, how to make it still look good. That's really what we're gonna talk about today's video. I know my channel is all about lighting and all that, but sometimes we don't have the budget or sometimes the video just causes for it to be outdoor and you know, harsh lighting might just be the option. So anyways, let's talk about that. All right, so let's just jump straight into it as we always do in this channel. So. How to achieve great images in harsh lighting. How to get a clean look. It's not gonna look the greatest, obviously, but it's gonna look really, really good. Meaning, you're not gonna get soft lighting, obviously. You know, you're not gonna get that look, but sometimes the video doesn't cost for it. It all depends on the style that you're going for, what's the mood of the video. For this particular music video, I went with no crew. I just took my girl and literally just told her, you're doing BTS and I'm just gonna shoot. And I knew that's all I was gonna need because the song itself required that type of look. So. That's why I just went by myself, and in today's video, this is how I'm gonna show you guys. So the first thing is first, make sure you have a camera that has great dynamic range, so you're able to retain highlights and shadows as much as possible, but on side of that is know your camera on how you're gonna expose the shot. Make sure you always shoot in log when you're shooting out and about. Never shoot in a cine D profile or natural profile, anything that really is gonna give you no information because those type of profiles, if you blow out a highlight, you're not gonna be able to recover it. Like if you were to shoot in log, you need to shoot in log to be able to get this image, to be able to get the information you need and also give it the colors that you want to be able to manipulate and be able to change a lot of things. And if you have raw also, that helps, but it's not needed, log is good enough. So for example, let me show you guys a clip from this particular music video. There was a moment where I had the artist and all the models and they were underneath a big umbrella. So by me putting them in there and having a wide shot, it got complicated. And that's something we're all gonna face when we're shooting outdoors, not indoors. You know, we have controlled lighting. When the sun's just hitting and they're underneath something, you know, they're gonna be underexposed and you wanna expose them. But by doing that, and if you're shooting as wide as I was, now if you see the sky or whatever the sun's touching, it's gonna be hard to retain that and not blow it out because you're gonna want to expose the subject. For example, for this particular clip, it's the artists and the models. I wanna expose them, but by exposing them properly, that means blowing out everything that the sun is hitting for the most part. So this is a big major tip that I try to tell everybody, but for some reason, everyone thinks you need like the best camera in order to get this type of image, but it's really just understanding the camera that you have. I use a Panasonic S1H, but you can get away with a black magic 6k that's only like two thousand dollars you can get away with a sony a7s3 a panasonic s5 there's a lot of other cameras in today's day that are cheap and it will help you overall when shooting in broad daylight it all comes down to the camera the other thing i want to show you guys as a matter of fact is something that a lot of people don't really take into account when shooting outdoors so if you guys watch this particular clip right now when they were dancing on the basketball court if I show you guys the log to just the Rec 709 LUT that I have, it looks very, very terrible. So this is where it comes back to getting to know your camera. You need to know how much you can push, what you can do in post to bring that image back. So I had to do major color grading into this video in order to bring the colors, in order to bring the image, because just from a log to Rec 709, it looked nasty. And it's, you know, I put a lot of work into it. And if you know your camera, you can get really great images. Yeah, you're gonna have harsh lighting, but at least you can counter that with great color grading and, you know, having the exposure set right. So you can mess around with it. The other thing you guys might wanna do is mess with the curves. You know, uh, I mean, I'm gonna make a color grading tutorial and all that later on. And of course, like an online session where we can talk about it, but also messing with the curves where you guys can go ahead and just drop the highlights and drop the harshness that's on their face. There's different ways to counter harsh lighting and you know overall give it a pleasing look where it doesn't look too nasty, but it comes down overall to knowing your camera, exposure, you know, using ND filters. Just understand knowing your camera, there's so many ways to go about it. You guys saw how I did it when it came to color grading. Same thing for exposure when I had them in the shade underneath the umbrella. There's moments where I go through things, you know, but I understand how much I can tweak when it comes to post, how much highlight information I can retain, how much I can blow out the scene in camera, but knowing in post, I can bring my highlights back down and it's not gonna be blown out. 
I actually never go by Instagram or waveform or whatever the camera offers in order for you to expose your subject. I just go by eye on my automost monitor and then from there I know how much I can bring back. That's just the way that I film. I won't tell you guys to expose that way unless you know it works for you guys as well. But overall, just knowing your camera, everyone thinks you need the latest camera, you need a RED or a RE because you know they're the cleanest when it comes to dynamic range and getting like a highlight roll off and just make it look so soft. But Realistically, there's a lot of cameras today. You don't need to spend crazy money in order to be able to give your image a great look in harsh lighting. Because everyone thinks you need diffusion and all that, and it helps, but we don't have the budget. We gotta work with what we got, right? So that means just shooting out and about, one man band, it is what it is, and make the most of it. But anyways, that's pretty much it for today's video. If it did help you guys, drop it a like, subscribe, leave a comment if there's anything else that I missed out on, or if you guys have any further questions, and I'll be happy to answer that. I'll catch you guys on the next one as always. Peace out, guys.